and uh, I'm very pleased this afternoon uh, to recognize uh, all our uh, resource persons for the public hearing of the Committee on Electoral Reform and People's Participation. And we acknowledge the virtual presence of Senator Robin Padilla is online. Thank you very much, uh, Binoy, at uh, nandito ka para mabuo yung quorum natin. At uh, considering na yung public hearing natin nung uh, last March 15, uh, suspended lamang, uh, hindi naman kailangan ng quorum, pero syempre inaanyayahan natin ang ating mga kapwa-senador na uh, lumahok sa ating diskusyon. Ngayon, I'd like to call on uh, Committee Secretary Attorney Dana Alberto to acknowledge the presence of all the resource persons and most especially the uh, commissioners and chairman of the COMELEC. Thank you. Good afternoon. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely from the COMELEC. We have Chairperson George Irwin M. Garcia, Commissioner Ray E. Bulay, Commissioner Nelson J. Celis, Executive Director Teopisto E. L. Nas Jr., Deputy Executive Director Attorney Rafael B. Olaño, we have Director Jeannie V. Flororita, the back, yes, um, Director Divina E. Blas Perez, Director John Rex Laudianco, and Director Eliza S. Sabile David. From DICT, we have Assistant Secretary Jeffrey Ian C.D. From DBM, we have Attorney Tricia Baraan. From DOST, we have Mr. John Zilvin Ramos and Mr. Samuel Kahimat. From GPPB, we have Attorney Maria Josen Claire M. Beltran Carandang. From NPO, we have Engineer Benedicto M. Cabral and Mr. Dante Arso. From NAMFREL, we have Mr. Eric Jude O. Alvia and Mr. Fernando D. Contreras Jr. From Philippine Computer Society, we have Mr. Edmundo Casino. From Tangulang Democracia, we have Attorney Demostenes B. Donato. And from Kapatiran Party, we have Mr. Norman Cabrera. That's all, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And uh, with that, um, we announce the agenda for the hearing. Uh, both appear to be my bill, Senate uh, Bill 179, for the uh, new Omnibus Election Code. Um, and this is Article 2, defining terms um, in-country voting for the national local election. And Article 11, the hybrid election system, as well as Article 21, canvassing of votes, Section 239. And uh, hereafter, we also have Senate Bill 1156, providing for hybrid national, local, and Bangsamora autonomous region elections through manual and automated voting and counting. So... Uh, this uh, largely deals with the hybrid election effort um, already taken up in the 18th Congress. It actually reached uh, the uh, plenary and uh, there was some substantial discussion already by the previous uh, Senate. However, um, we would like to pursue this effort and uh, carry on with the same. And with that, we are conducting a hearing um, attempting to align any new developments in this area. So uh, with that, uh, we would like to invite um, all our uh, expert, uh, experts and resource persons here on the best possible way to uh, conduct said hybrid elections. Uh, right now, we have stated that uh, election returns are going to be um, expanded in their definition so that they will also include in printed form and manually accomplished for purposes of reflecting the manual count at the polling precinct, assuming that there's going to be a manual count at precinct level. Further, the bills also specify that um, the um, hybrid election 
need not be implemented for overseas voting. That we will leave uh, to the wisdom of the COMELEC. Further, there's also an advisory council to be established 18 months before the elections and deactivated six months thereafter to be constituted by uh, the DICT, the chairperson of both Senate and House Electoral Reforms Committee, DOST, DEP-ED, member of the academe, uh, three ICT professionals, and two non-governmental election reform organizations. Three observers from accredited citizens' arms will also be included as non-voting members, as well as the dominant majority and minority parties as determined by the COMELEC. Um, it's also specified, and here there is a distinction, and I need once again to consult all of you as resource persons. 1156 states that the funds to enable said advisory council to function will be included in the annual appropriations for DICT. However, um, Senate Bill 179 indicates that the said honoraria will be included in the budget of COMELEC. I think we have to determine the same, uh, and they probably should be uniform. Uh, further, um, Bill uh, Senate Bill 179 indicates that uh, it should be the Advisory Council to uh, recommend the best technology uh, and most appropriate for the effort. And uh, further, um, there's also a proposal for a technical evaluation committee, which I think in practice is already occurring in the COMELEC today, but uh, we seek to render it explicit to make certain that it becomes mandatory. Said evaluation committee for technical affairs is tasked to certify that the uh, certification entity to be chosen um, is categorically able to state that the election system, the automated election system chosen, uh, is uh, operating properly, securely, and accurately. And um, also there is in um, the uh, new bill a, uh, an indication that a separate election return shall be prepared for the manual count. So Hiwalaisha from the automated count and that in the event of a discrepancy of uh, at least 2% of the total number of votes, a discrepancy occurs between manual and automated count, an automatic recount shall be undertaken. I uh, would like to discuss also the practicality of the same, although it uh, does provide a level of uh, uh, security. There is also, of course, the uh, uh, conduct of stakeholder education. Again, a typically uh, um, COMLEC exercise already, but in this case, we make it explicit and uh, mandatory. So with that, we'd like the comments um, necessarily of the chairman who has in the past already uh, committed um, his support for a hybrid process, but exactly how that hybrid system shall look is what we need to tackle this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, as far as the first issue, which was mentioned by the Honorable Chairperson, the issue of the honoraria to be received by the members of the Comerec Advisory Council, we honestly believe, uh, well, personally, uh, that the, uh, the said amount should be included in the budget of the DICT. It should not be included in the budget of the Commission on Election because this is an advisory council, which is an independent body, independent from the Commission on Election. We do not want to be accused uh, that uh, we are holding such fund for purposes of influencing the advice of the, the Comelec Advisory Council. So it should be before uh, should be uh, lodged before the DICT, Your Honor. Okay, so that seems reasonable so that uh, there can be no question that they're being objective and they're actually detached from the process. But the budget is the ICT. Uh, so we follow uh, the uh, Senate Bill 1156 that lodges the uh, budget in the ICT at the sa because it confuses the issue. Well taken, Paul. And um, also, there are... Um, uh, statements 
obviously that there will be a great delay in time. I recall that uh, several of the commission commissioners um, actually conducted a time and motion study, and there was indeed a delay. What are your thoughts? Um, I think um, the chairman is on record previously as saying that uh, while you support it, you are aware that there will be a delay with the manual count of about an hour, an hour and a half. Madam Chair, if in case we will be manually counting the ballots, even on the assumption that there will be, that we are going to count each ballot one minute per ballot, and there will be 800 uh, ballots, on the assumption that all the voters in a particular precinct will be able to vote, that will require about 13.33 hours, additional 13.33 hours. And even if we are able to, to uh, count the ballots using the machines in a matter of 30 minutes, then you will be uh, uh, needing additional 13.33 hours, Your Honor. And that is on the assumption only of uh, 800 voters being able to vote. Because 18 times. Yes, I believe that actually a time and motion uh, run was conducted uh, previous to the May elections um, precisely to test this out. Perhaps uh, Director Sino Cruz or someone else who assisted us during that uh, effort. It was, uh, it was conducted under the supervision of Commissioner Marlon Casquejo. And as I recall, the real time was only two to three hours max. And that was still a fumbling effort, no? Kasi experiment lang siya. I don't know. Is Director Sino Cruz able to enlighten us in this regard? Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, I may not be able to recall the exact time in motion study and David. Uh, if I may be given uh, additional information, when was it conducted? Sipistong. <laughs> Yes, I uh, think, for example, well, there are two issues. As I recall, under Commissioner Casquejo, it wasn't pure manual counting. There was an effort to use bar scanners. And uh, as a result, mas mobilis talaga. Dahil nag-scanner lang tayo ng bar scanner. And I don't know if that's uh, something that we should consider. Madam um, Chairperson, if I may. Yes, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. The COMELEC is now in the crucial stage of uh, initially preparing our TOR for the 2025 elections, the automation of the election. Our policy direction is actually fast track, meaning full automation with transparency count and audit, without uh, setting, a setting aside random manual audit, which is specifically provided by Republic Act 9369. We are looking into the possibility of a machine being able to uh, count automatically and at the same time, uh, uh, using the same machine to manually count the the ballot, the votes in the ballots, simply because in using the, the the barcode or something like that, the problem, uh, Madam Chair, is uh, the, the question is which are what what particular document are we going to use? Are we going to use the ballot? Or are we going to use the receipt? Because there were certain there there were certain sectors saying we should only use the receipts. But however, in the case of uh, Maliksi versus the Commission election, it was only the ballot images that was sustained by the Supreme Court as 
as an original ballot. And therefore, you cannot use the receipt because the receipts are not uh, ballots per se. And so we, what we are saying is, in our draft DOR, which we are trying to consult with the CAC, uh, and we are asking the CAC for guidance, in our draft DOR, we are saying that there will be still, there will still be um, automation of the election, full automation, and uh, immediately after the sending of the, of the result and the printing of the eight election returns, the machine per se will allow manual count uh, because we will be requiring a 13 inch screen for the machine. Um, we, will, we, we are not at liberty at this point to explain further the content of the TOR because it is still in the initial uh, stage, Madam Chair. But we will definitely submit the same to the Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation. So the possibility is that the same machine will undertake both the automated as well as the manual count. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Yes. One Some, after the other. Yes. Mauna yung automated, pakatapos, send yung manual. Po. In both cases, ang bibilangin yung ballot as upheld by the Supreme Court. Yun ang sinasabi po ni Chairman. Pero yung TOR is in the process of uh, being written up and uh, we are not yet in a position to divulge. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Chair. Well, that, like, for example, what if if the same screen uh -oh. will be able to show the ballot images, all the ballot images as, as uh, is contained in the SD cards. Eh, matutuwa yung mga tao niyan pag nakita nila yung balota nila kasi yun talaga ang hinahanap, di ba? Yun yes. ang ating ninanais na magkaroon ng hybrid at uh, pagtibayin ang tiwala ng taong bayan sa proseso natin sa pagboboto. But in order not to delay, Madam Chair. Eh, yun na nga. The not, not, question is, ayaw naman natin na ganun katagal. So I just had a very simple question. We've undertaken many manual elections, particularly with the barangay and the SK elections. Gano'n ba katagal? Kasi ang pagkaalala ko, hindi na mga ganun katagal na 13.3 hours. Uh, ang naaalala ko sa probinsya, mabilis lang yan eh. Hindi naman super bilis, pero hindi rin naman katagalan na magdamagan. Pag barangay po kasi, Madam Chair, 400 lang ang registered voters per clustered precinct. So in the, on the assumption that only about 200 to 250 will be able to vote, so you will be needing only about two and a half to three hours to count individually the ballots po. Pagka po kasi automated, and kasama pa po kasi yung pag, pag, pagka po manual, tinatali pa po sa blackboard, sulat sa blackboard, sulat sa election return. So medyo yun po yung makakatagal. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we are also heading towards a BARM election in 2025. Ano? And as a general rule, and as it happened in the past, automated pilot uh, elections were conducted in the BARM. Maybe that's another... Uh, opportunity to actually test the uh, the effort. Kaya lang, uh, the other question is, maybe we can, uh, with Director Sino Cruz and the rest who are here who tried uh, in the past to do so, uh, maybe we can conduct another uh, pilot test in a uh, in a few identified barangays. Ano? Uh, ulitin natin, kasi parang dati kasi may bar scanning eh. Eh, kung walang scanning yung purely manual, gano'ng katagal yun? Mas lalong matagal. Siyempre. Madam Chair, with your kind indulgence. Or antayin na natin yung uh, TOR and uh, yung machine that will have capability to do both. Yes, Madam Chair. Before the end of uh, the, this month, the COMELEC hopefully will be able to come up with the TOR. We are, all, we are waiting for the, the recommendation of the COMELEC Advisory Council. This representation had already written twice. Uh, Honorable uh, Secretary Ivan Uy for guidance uh, in accordance with Republic Act 9369, although unfortunately until today, uh, we have not heard from the CAC. Hopefully, before the end of the month, napaka-crucial po kasi for the information of everyone because the COMELEC should be able to proceed with the procurement short of award by July of this year. Any, any, any day short, malilate na po ang COMELEC because magkakaroon pa tayo ng end-to-end -end testing and at the same time, mga certi international certifications and such other requirements uh, na required po prior to the, the, the election of 2025. So crucial po na makapag-come up kami ng TOR before the end of April and July, dapat po may procurement na po kami. Okay, that's right. 
Um, time's getting uh, really tight here, but uh, let's give them a little time, given that uh, the holidays have just uh, ended, and uh, perhaps it's just a question of uh, time, no? Um, there have been suggestions that the hybrid election system will require only manual counting, as opposed to manual plus automated, and that the automated portion is only for transmission. This will certainly save us billions, but uh, once again, there will be the usual problems of the Dagbawas, uh, human error, and uh, such other uh, problems that have arisen in many, many petitions uh, that uh, have been post, uh, had, that have been uh, filed with the COMELEC in the past. Uh, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, ma'am, Madam Chair. In, in which instance, uh, we would like to state that hybrid now, the definition of hybrid election should not only pertain to automated and manual. Hybrid can, all, can also pertain to automated with transparency, which is also automated. So... People yes. can see the actual ballots, which is uh, equivalent to manual audit as well. So basically, kung ganun po, ma'am, it will uh, facilitate all and trust issues will be solved. Commissioner Salis is aware that during the 18th Congress, we had this discussion. At ang problema, eh, imbes na nakabawas ng gastos, dumami ng dumami yung gastos pagkat dinagdagan ng dinagdagan ng mga makinarya. Lap, Uh, projection, screen, sang katutak na, di ba? And then, nung tinot up namin yung uh, amounts, parang uh, imposible itong mangyari at lalong magagalit ang uh, tao kapag narinig na uh, lumobo ng todo-todo ang uh, gastos. So, as I recall, we brought it down to bar scanner na lang. Yun na lang yung pinaka-base technology na gagamitin sa pagbilang uh, in addition to the regular automated DCMs. So, I understand what you're saying, Commissioner Bulay, na we have another automated system, not necessarily um, manual system. Kaya lang, um, this will not uh, respond to the intent of saving some money for the government as well as the voting public. Yes, Commissioner Sellis. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. In our uh, recent uh, National Election Summit, that's March 8 to 10, sa Sofitel, there were a lot of uh, technologies that were already demonstrated in public. So that's for three days. So when it comes to cost consideration, There are several alternatives in uh, making sure that we're using a cost-effective system. There are systems that use uh, touchscreen, DRE. Some are using uh, cell phones, tablets. But Tama. this can be I mean, considered. there are many cheaper methods, but we're always yeah. uh, questioning their safety, no? And yeah. the provision of adequate safeguards Correct. kapag internet, kapag cell phone, kasi napakadaling ihak ng uh, mga ito. Of course, uh, in our uh, uh, plan for the national and local elections, our vision is to make sure that we don't make use of internet voting for the national and local elections through the use of the internet. So uh, what we're going to do is really to make sure yung uh, transmission will be secure, not really making uh, use of the internet. That's right. Another uh, costly offshoot of these changes, um, hopefully, um, Commissioner Sellis, we are in fact able to find affordable systems that will adequately address the problems of Dagbawas, human error, and the rest. Um, the offshoot always is uh, that uh, there are so many petitions um, that uh, the COMELEC is, the, is tasked to resolve. And... Um, And these are with uh, regard to manifest errors following manual counts. So hopefully the hybrid system will also uh, uh, decrease the number of these 
very obvious patent errors. Ano? Kaya hindi rin pwedeng purely manual. And uh, perhaps the use of technology would answer to that. Um, I think that's what we seek also. No? So how do we minimize human errors in the counting and tabulation of votes? Parati yan ang tinatanong, eh, di ba? Kapag manual, you're prone na naman to fatigue, exhaustion, and uh, confusion, etc. So uh, I think... Um, that's the uh, argument against uh, a manual setup, even at the precinct level. So uh, those are the concerns. As uh, you suggested, Commissioner Bulay, uh, there have been others who say that the hybrid system should only use electronic transmission and canvassing, as opposed to using both electronic and manual. The clear disadvantage is that it'll take some time, no? If there's both manual and uh, um, uh, electronic, but of course everyone seeks transparency. So, what are the thoughts of uh, Comelec as well as the other stakeholders involved in this? If uh, the hybrid system uses only electric transmission, as the bill states presently, how do we ensure transparency in transmission? There were many rumors in the past that there were several uh, servers, that there were several areas of tabulation, all because the transparency uh, uh, was lacking, perhaps. How do we ensure that the results in the precincts are exactly the same as those finally transmitted and canvassed in the centers? Uh, these are the safeguards, maybe the OST, the IECT, and the other technical people can assist us on this. Yes, uh, ASEC D. Madam Senator, um, for electronic transmissions, there are error checking mechanisms electronically. For example, um, the use of hashing, which will produce yung hash codes, will produce, if you compare it with the original versus the transmitted artifact, if they are exactly the same. Uh, so, yes, so uh, the use of, of hash, codes hash codes or message authentication codes Mar marami pong technology. So we can use hash codes, message authentication codes, and of course, digital signatures. <laughs> and of course? Digital signatures. Yes, I mean, we've been talking about digital signatures. So I was asking again. Um, it's still uh, part and parcel of our process, but it's uh, not implemented, no? So these are one of the safeguards that are uh, closely awaited by uh, everyone. For... Uh, I'm sorry, Madam. Message Sen something you said? Hash codes? Message authentication codes. Ah, okay. Or hash, yeah. hash codes, message authentication codes, uh, digital signatures. But just to reiterate, digital signatures is just a more complex version of the first two that I mentioned. With regard to the digital, digital signatures, uh, Your Honor, um, I would like to also state that we are trying to, add it, under this administration, we are trying to increase the capability of the Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure. Kasi what? Sorry. We have a Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure. Ito yung nagpo-produce ng digital signatures. For use PKI. Sorry, what's it called? Uh, Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure or PNPKI. P? PNPKI. Uh, public key. key Infrastructure. So, um, we're trying to increase its capability para ma-allow namin, number one, yung pag issue ng digital signatures. Pero sa totoo lang, ASEC D, kaya hindi ko nare-recognize sa Kinalimutan na namin yan eh. <laughs> Tagal-tagal na natin pinag-uusapan, di pa rin magawa ng DICT. Uh, may, may budget proposal kami dyan. <laughs> Your Honor, Sorry? We have a budget proposal. Ang, ang ending ng sasabihin ko sana, Your Honor, is we actually included that in the budget proposal. Uh, for the increase of the capability, including the technology used in the PKI. We are aware of the problems it currently has, which prohibits us from giving out, kasi kailangan ng COMELEC around 300,000 digital signatures to 400,000 digital signatures. It's a huge effort between before 2022. Uh, and uh, we commandeered so many uh, groups in the DepEd to push it forward. Pero wala rin nangyari. Yes. Uh, that the, the capability of the PNPKI at that time is only at 150,000 points. 
they require 300,000 at that time. Uh, sorry, ah, pero lumang tugtugin na to eh. Parang, tingnan mo si Director Sino Cruz eh, talagang pailing-iling na rin. Katulad ko. Wala. Ayun. Parang uh, tagal na kasi niyan. So what additional budget did you actually request? Uh, we're, right now, Your Honor, we're still at the process of meeting into DBM. Nakausap na rin namin si DBM. Yeah, how much nga? Uh, around 150 for the PNPKI. 150 million. 150 million. Right. Okay. Or the PNPKI. All right. Um, okay. Uh, does DOST have anything to add to the discussion? Uh, permission to, to speak, Madam Chair. Um, um, and when it comes to technology, um, in, in the case of transparency and transmission. Oh, because that's the parating problem, mm. diba? Kapag fully automated or pure machine, mm. parang Mas, mo, mas okay pa yung tara-tara ng mga teacher noon. At least nakikita mo yung boto mo eh. Correct, ma'am. Um, uh, when it comes to transparency and, and transmission again, ma'am, um, we need to separate those, ma'am, when it comes to technology. So, in, in terms of uh, transparency, say in the case of uh, we will do a manual recount. So, I agree with the comment like po, ma'am, that they observed na uh, we need to employ technology also when doing manual recount. So if there's a, really a technology that uh, uh, that can do a manual uh, recount with the use of technology, uh, na hindi na po tayo dadaan sa mga man, manual na tali ng mga teachers, uh, we can employ that. But if, if merong ganun, so we can... We're about a manual recount? No, ma'am. Uh, a recount or just a count muna? You're confusing me, sorry. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, it is the Man manual recount na, ma'am. Recount? Recount. recount. It's a recount. Teka, teka. It's a recount na, ma'am. No, the, on, the recount only occurs when there's a discrepancy between manual and automatic and automated. Yes, ma'am, it's recount. If there's a discrepancy, there's a, uh, we will employ recount. Okay. So I'm talking about the recount, ma'am, because um, uh, it is very expensive to do recount, as, okay. a, as far as I understand, ma'am. So we can employ technology to do the recount. So if there's a technology, ma'am, that, that can do a count and recount, uh, if there's a discrepancy, so we can employ that. But um, my request, lang po mama, is to have it commented by the advisory bodies, po mama. Yung technology if you propose, as mentioned kanina, marami din daw pong available na technology. But uh, we can have it commented by the adv advisory bodies. That's for the transparency. If we uh, now for the transmission, naman po. Um, uh, as for the DOST, we agree din po that we can uh, we can ensure the safe transmission using uh, using yung uh, codes, ma'am, na binaverify yung yun ba yung pinadala yeah, at yung narisip. Yeah, all the codes, whether they're hash codes, um, yes, we can use authentication, that and the famous digital signature. We also agree with that. Yeah, okay. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you, po. Is there anyone from Comelec uh, Technical or IT that would like to comment and uh, add to the discussion, please? Since it would appear that you are the ones uh, who will be implementing this, and I assume you studied all those uh, technologies uh, exhibited during the summit. Baka meron kayong nakita doon na bago-bago at magagawa natin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senator Amy. Um, Jeannie Florita Po from the ITD, Information Technology Department of the Comelec. During the the vendors fair po in summit, um, most of the technologies there do not have the capability yet of the um transparency. Electronic transparency. Um, most but of Commissioner the Commissioner Selish just said that there are so many available. There are so many available. And in fact, uh, Chairman Garcia uh, has said that a single machine can do both things. Yes, uh, yes, pa. but that... you're saying you're disputing uh, what they said, and in your opinion, none of the technologies presented are adequate. Is that correct? During the summit point, the vendor sphere, there was no capability of the the transparency manual, um, transparency, electronic transparency counting. But um, since um, the transparency counting is only a software part, um, those machines can do that. But uh, uh, don't... I'm lost. Can you start from the top? First, um, they can't do it. Now they can. Uh, uh, 
what I'm saying po is that the vendor sphere doesn't have yet, the machines doesn't have yet that capability. But Which capability? The capability to do the transparency counting, as mentioned po by the chairman uh, Garcia. Uh, but since that capability is only a software, that yeah, it's can just the be, software. I mean, at the end of the day, you just need authentication codes and yes, perhaps that can be added, po, because um, during in the terms of reference, there is a customization phase that will last for six months. So whatever we need for the system to do, uh, that can be done during customization phase. Yes, director. Uh, nalito ako. So, wala tayong, wala tayong magagawa. Ito na to. Pinaka the best na to. Here, here. Moving forward, there's nothing we can do. Your Honor. This is really depressing. I'm sorry. We um, yes, uh, Chairperson Garcia and ASIC team. Actually, ma'am, yung, yung nasa uh, exhibit, wala pong technology na ganon. Pero in our draft DOR, uh, which I cannot reveal yet, uh, this uh, these suppliers or providers should be able to come up with a machine that can elect, that can uh, that will hybridize everything meaning an electronic count at the same time a manual counting and that is possible uh, paano po namin nakikita yon yung una po wala pa rin pinagbago sa ginagawa natin sa automated election ikaka-count pa rin close voting after close voting magpi-print ng magpi-print ng walong election returns pagka-print ng walong election returns magta-transmit ng uh, magta-transmit na siya after ng transmission papasok po yung transparency count sabi ko nga po pwedeng nasa screen lang makikita ng lahat lahat ng watchers makikita yung balota ballot images yeah, pero chair parang diskumpiyado yung director ng IT <laughs> ma paano ba in the meantime in the meantime uh, your Honor, Madam Chair, wala po kaming nakitang machine na ganon sa, sa fair. Wala po kaming nakita. But we will demand, uh, based on our uh, TOR that the COMELEC will come up, uh, we will demand that... Isn't that a little tricky? You have to design and invent a new software, uh, which is largely untested, clearly, because it's brand new. Yeah. Uh, your Honor. Yeah. If, if I may interject and to add information to because i was also there in the summit uh, to the good chairman and maybe this is premature because we are yet to comment on their proposal as member of the cac um to provide the technology but during the summit there is it might not be a device but there is a transparency mechanism discussed in one of the breakout sessions in which we are very interested in and this is blockchain um, creating ledgers will Nako, mas na naman yan. And, 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 uh, if I may uh, sorry uh, but I'm a, I'm I'm a, 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 but I'm, this is for transmission only I'm a big time cynic and skeptic of that what 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 it can do po kasi is that in real time all political parties would know a transmission occurred the time of the transmission and what the count was. Yeah, that's not good enough just to know the time. Uh, including all the information about that transmission. So what, what we're trying to do is getting rid of the need to pull or push information through a transparency server, but rather have a distributed way of knowing in advance. We're, we're only talking about yung, ano mama, yung transparency mechanism because you were asking integrity and transparency. Kasi that's always the question, di ba? Kasi dadagdagan pa natin to ng technology. Eh, mas lalong lalabo na naman yan sa taong bayan. Kasi yeah, it's yet <laughs> another machine producing yet another set of results. And how do we get to the bottom of this and finally uh, prove the veracity of the results announced? Uh, that's what I'm trying to say, Your Honor. It's a, it's a it's a software. It's 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 a software. Pero it's uh, in in uh, in laymanizing it, uh, Your Honor. It's just a, a way of simultaneously distributing information. No, we understand what blockchain is, but uh, we're also very hesitant about uh, using it in uh, such a uh, critical situation. Given that we all accept that it's entirely unreliable, uh, I I will have to. Well, then I will <laughs> okay, consider the wisdom of the chair. Unreliable, very frequently. <laughs>
uh, behaving rather erratically and without uh, adequate security safeguards. I don't know. Anyway, Bakatama si Director Florita, it hasn't been invented yet. Mr. Contreras, please. And you're speaking for an for an Amphil pot. Thank you for Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, we 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 appreciate you having that cynical mind in terms of looking at security because that's that's the key point. You know, one of the challenges that we have is we've been keep pushing on standards instead of technology for Namfrel. We submitted that to several members of uh, Comelec, even, even to their office. W one of the challenges that we're, we're being stuck right now is we're going into deep into technology but without any standards. Say, for example, your, your question, how long was that manual count? Uh, around the period of 2012-2013, we did that time motion study with uh, Comelec before. It was a manual count. However, we, we, we changed a little on that manual count and yielded less than 90 minutes for the count. And that small change is that instead of reading the name, we assign a unique number per candidate. So that can be that can be a standard. We submitted several standards. So for example, on the security side, you're saying all of the technology can be used. It can be invented, but the standard has to be there. So for example, we've been pushing for what you're saying, digital signature. Even if we use, we have digital signatures, say, for example, 2022, it is never part of the checks of the system. It will only be used if there's someone contesting it. So we have to use the technology as it is defined. So if we have digital signature, for example, once the packet arrives, we compare the digital signature based on the digital signature of the BEI assigned to the present. But there's there's no standard. I mean, that, that's one of our worry. Uh, in terms of doing the technology, there are several technologies that you can do, but one of the best thing that you have to protect or one of the most important thing from a data source perspective is protect the data source. So yung isa pong standard no, na pinanghihinayangan namin, we, we have a very potent uh, device, uh, paper, yung VVPAT. Pinotektahan ng mga botante, they waited for hours for it. No? They, they want to feed their ballot and see the VVPAT. But at the end of the day, there's no use for the VVPAT. So what we were proposing as a standard, drop the VBPAT, print the ballot. So instead of a VBPAT, have a voter verified ballot. They can use whatever technology. It has to be agnostic. It can follow a standard. Pwedeng DRE. Pwede pa rin yung lumang makina. But that doesn't become the ballot. The printed one becomes the ballot and verified by the voter. Then you put it in a ballot box. Now, the ballot also, as a standard, we're proposing, yung po yung sinasabi nyo, kailangan dalawa lagi yung source. Standard accounting principle, double entry. May user, may, may uh, human readable, and may machine readable. Let the machine read the machine readable portion. It can be QR code, and can be barcode, or whatever special kind of code. Then the manual can be post-processed manually. So, naisubmit mo na, tumakbo na yung walong ER mo, na transmit mo na, you have controls on the present. So the standard that we're requesting, yun nga, voter verified ballot, was in present counting, no machine uh, pre-counting. So hindi binibilang ng makina. So pinasok ko sa makina yung galing sa balota na voter verified, saka lang niya ito total. So, okay. Uh, well taken. I'm sure Comelec has a lot of uh, um, rea reactions to what was stated by Mr. Contreras. But... Uh, Mabalik tayo kasi tama yung sinasabi ni Chairman kanina na it's rather unfair because we haven't got the tour in hand yet and it's in the process of discussion. Um, is the CAC actually here? Is there a representative? It's you. Okay. Um, what is the status of the comment on the draft TOR? Uh, Your Honor. It's happening ba or not? I mean... Yes, we're setting a meeting of the CAC this April. I left the... The chairman already said that it's uh, getting uh, delayed or uh, it's uh, uh, getting tight. I don't have the full um, information, Your Honor. What I have is that we have a letter dated April 11. I don't know if there is an earlier uh, letter. But we'll work so, on wala pang reply. Wala pang Madaling reply. sabi, the Advisory Committee ha Council has not yet replied to the Comelex request for guidance on the draft EOR. Is that correct? Yes, sir. If, ah, it's already the second letter. What's if, taking ma so Madam good? Chair. May iipit tayo nito. Tama si Chair. Ma Madam Chair, NAMPRAL is part of the CAC. We haven't gotten any invite yet 
or any of the ano. so we were part of the CAC the CAC so never convened the second letter Kaya po, wala po kami from, what's going from, on from from the CAC secretariat Ang CAC ang dapat mag-invite. Ano ba nangyari sa CAC? Ano uh, ba head ng CAC? Honor. Di ba dapat uh, uh, ICT? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Senator. So, I'm the alternate chairman of the CAC. We already convened uh, the new members of the CAC. Uh, Why haven't they been invited? According to the according to the rules, Your Honor, there are two uh, ano tawag nyo doon? Um, election watchdogs uh, that should be members of the CAC. And at this particular juncture, uh, the ones invited were Lente and uh, PPCRV. Uh, so, we already... Yes. Is it two? Is it really two? Yes, because I think the bills actually seek to uh, enlarge but, the uh, participation to three. But in the meantime, but that we said, have two. But that said, we will be we be, we can invite uh, Namfral as a non-voting uh, or observing. Uh, you can invite as many as you want. Because yeah. non-voting, naman yan eh. Yes, Your Honor. So we'll uh, our first meeting was uh, done last uh, month, March, and then we'll be oh, having right another meeting to here. The choice of the two. Uh, in the realm of cheap gossip. <laughs> Maybe it's better to put it in writing, Your Honor, if you may. <laughs> I, 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 There's always <laughs> basis for choosing one over the other. It may be prudent for, for the current CAC to check all the, the meeting uh, logs and uh, all of the minutes of the meeting and who was the most active members in the previous council. So that, that might be a basis. But if not, I mean, we defer to their... Uh, wisdom in their judgment on that, but uh, no, I, I, I being a group since uh, for, for almost 40 you years, grounds for protest. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm asking, uh, since we're speaking about standards, what were the standards for the choice of the two and not all the rest? Just, just to add, Madam Chair, we were the only group who sent the standard during the last CAC, which was ratified by the Commission. Uh, by the, not the commission, but the CAC. So, by, by, by the group, and it was forwarded. And so, j just for your info, Madam Chair. Okay, right. Yes, Madam Chair. Chair the, the reason why the commission wrote a letter to the CAC asking for invoking the provision of 9369, uh, requesting for their recommendation, is because we do not want to be accused of not hearing everyone. If we are going to come up with the TOR simply because of the lack of material time, and this TOR does not have the the recommendation or comment of practically everyone, more particularly the CAC. Well, of course, uh, Madam Chair, we do not want to abandon our constitutional duty. With or without the CAC recommendation, which we are really asking uh, at this point, we will proceed with the TOR. And uh, we will be asking every, we will be, we will be making that public before the end of April. And we will be asking everyone for their comments, for their recommendation, and et cetera. And uh, we, we, based on the final TOR, we will proceed with the procurement by July. Th that is very necessary, especially during the budget call of the DBM. The DBM will not be able, be able to recommend uh, in the president's budget the necessary budget for 2024 and 2025. Dalawang aspect po kasi yun eh. 24 preparatory, mas malaki po yun. Iba yung 25, mas maliit. And there, pero po pag humingi kami, dapat alam po nila kung magkano yung 24 at magkano yung 25. Make no mistake about this. We are going to change the machine. We are going to change the system. We will push for that at all costs. Okay, thank you, uh, Chair. But to your mind, if we keep having trouble with the CAC, baka dapat wala ng CAC. Palakasin na lang yung IT ng Comilic. Uh, your, your Honor. Commissioner Bulay, please. Sorry. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, under 9369, the composition of the CAC includes two members representing non-governmental electoral to be vetted by the CIC chair. So, it, uh, I do not know because they have not replied to us after two letters. I think uh, the chair wrote two letters. When Our the commissioner... Letter, they're claiming that the second letter only uh, um, 
got sent on April 11, is that correct? Madam Chair, Chairperson of the Steering Committee, Commissioner Amy Ferrellino, also wrote them before the Chair wrote them. And for lack of material time, we really have to start. That is why, if you will allow me, we studied your very good law, the revision. Yes, in, right. in section 128 and I'm perfectly one... open to revising the revision. Kung uh, hindi nagtatrabaho uh, yung CAC, di palta na natin. In, 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 in line. Kaya, Madam Chair, in line with that, yung, of your proposed bill, section 128 and 129, we, we, we adopted a flexible language with respect to the machine that will be the subject of the TOR. We we had a, we had in mind a machine and then a set of programs, which will be acceptable to everyone. So uh, we have our own proposal for this section one to eight and one to nine to protect the revision the law uh, as proposed by the honourable senator. Because it's a good author of the law that we revised. But we're perfectly open to uh, Thank you, Madam. Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. This. And uh, just proceeding with something simpler. Asik D. Your Honor, in defense of the CAC, we only convened the CAC in March, uh, the first week of March. That was the only time that we uh, convened. And uh, we did invite uh, members of the Commissioner. That's uh, the month of, and a half ago. Comelec. Yes. And then they wrote a letter, I was informed right now, March 20 and April 11. The CAC has to act collectively. I was talking to other members of the CAC. And what I can promise is we will convene the CAC and we will respond to their letter within, within this month, uh, before the month ends. This, will be the on this is only the second meeting of the CAC. Uh, that's, my, uh, that's our commitment right now, Your Honor. Yes, uh, I understand, but uh, yes, uh, how will you respond? I mean, what I'm trying to say is you're going to send them a letter back and then another letter and the second letter. Can we get no, on with it? No, uh, Your Honor, we will, we will proceed not by responding to the letter, but by providing the required uh, recommendations. Of course, the CAC is only a recommendatory body to the, techno to the questions being asked by the COMELEC, including the technology to be used for the upcoming 2025 elections. Okay, um, we're talking about customizing. I uh, would like to move to the possibility that we eventually adopt purely mounted, ma manual counting and purely electronic transmission. Um, would the Comelec be able to design its own system? I mean, do we own the current uh, consolidating and canvassing systems that we have? Is there a technology transfer component in the contracts for the purchase and lease of these systems? Madam Chair, all the software that were used in 2022 are owned by Comelec already. We, had, we have the source code and we had a training of the yes. source code. Tama. We election. went through that diba, in the 18th Congress, bago mag election. Pero since we have to uh, change uh, and redesign, kaya ba natin mag-redesign uh, ng sariling sistema? We can use po yung Smartmatic CCS with some modification. We can, we can already do that kasi po we have na the, the training on the source code. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Madam please. Chair, that's the, one of the points of uh, discussion and will be the serious debate among the members of the Commission simply because we do not want uh, any indication that we are favoring when we prepare the TOR, we are favoring one provider as against the other. It should be a free for all. We would like the best technology available in the market and a technology that will protect the credibility, integrity, and the transparency of the election. And that's why uh, we are even, we will be recommending to the uh, president. Uh, for purposes of our budget, that we will not only change the hardware, we will have to change the software. And at the same time, there should be a separate, there should be a separate TOR for the hardware, separate TOR for the software, and there should be a separate TOR for the transmission. Okay. 
Uh, that seems reasonable. Mr. Casino, I think you've been frantically raising your hand. Yeah, I'm thinking with them, Chair. I'd like to concur with the uh, Assistant Secretary D uh, as the uh, co-chair of the uh, Advisory Council that uh, it is true that they convened the Advisory Council as of March 6th and uh, in the presence of Commissioner Celis, who was also representing Comelec at that time. And uh, it was been agreed by the members of the Council <coughs> Uh, what particular platform would the Commission be looking at and uh, what are the timelines that we have to look into and that is already put into the minutes. And uh, as to the other members who would like to be in, among the stakeholders who would like to be, I, we leave that to the discretion of the Chairman of the Council. Uh, as far as the technology is concerned, on, on for behalf of the industry, we are we are supportive of whatever technology that can be. And we are, we are we have seen the exhibitors during the election summit, and from what we've gathered from the consultations for those present, it seems that it's uh, the advances in technology has been very uh, progressive, and uh, even 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 converting whatever software or hardware need be necessary to uh, comply with uh, the law uh, can be provided nowadays. In fact, uh, probably the timeline of development could even be shortened. Thanks to the advances with AI, we're talking about artificial intelligence, wherein there are so many software development toolkits that can make programming a lot faster. So it's not really rocket science, so to speak, uh, because we're being familiar with this uh, implementation for the past five elections. We have undergone, uh, we've seen all the glitches and the lapses of the uh, technology being used, and that's why we con we support the position of the chairman of uh, Comelec, uh, wherein uh, we'd like to start off anew, fresh, because uh, we would not want to be committed to a single vendor, uh, if possible. Yeah, we're, uh, it's, it's good that they're looking into the option of having a separate TOR for the hardware, a separate TOR for the software, a separate TOR for the transmission, or whatever the advisory council would, would uh, agree upon. And uh, uh, our organization, the Philippine Computer Society, have submitted our recommendation to the Advisory Council when they communicated in uh, coming up with a more thorough uh, subcommittees, uh, unlike what we have on the law, where it's only a flat line, but to create other subcommittees, not only for the with respect to the TOR, but also for the implementation, like uh, project management, change management, because we don't want the same errors that happened in the past. Uh, for example, that the time that they inserted that Enya and they call it cosmetic change, there's no such thing as cosmetic change in IT. What we call it in, in the industry is we call it change management and there's a certain protocol. Unfortunately, those measures were not uh, incorporated uh, by the uh, project management officer implementing uh, body within the commission. So we would like to submit that for recommendation to the advisory council in, in, in view that they will submit that to the M Bank. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Casino. And uh, yes, uh, unlike uh, Director Florita, I uh, did see great advances in technology that we can take advantage of in the summit. And uh, we certainly should look into those. Yeah. If, if I may add, uh, Madam Chair, it's also recognized under Section 33 of Republic Act 9369 that a website, which has not yet been fulfilled yet, <laughs> that even to the level of a pre precinct, you can already detect, so it does, if, if the commission would like to pursue full transparency, yes. we would recommend that uh, every single precinct, every single machine that is used must be posted on a website which can be accessed by everybody. So that would guarantee more transparency, Madam Chair. I think that's uh, been suggested that uh, the Comelec website should display to the general public the electoral returns as they're electorally transmitted to the servers in real time. And uh, given that it's really a very simple exercise, I don't see why we can't do that. Uh, instead of the what, seven-hour uh, blackouts that occurred in 2019, for example, and others in the past. Yes. Yes, Attorney Donato. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on behalf of Angulang Demokrasya, ma'am, we follow only two principles, secret vote, open count. For purposes of this hearing, we are focused on open count. Uh, by open count, we refer to the counting at the precinct level, which is the ultimate count. And based on the discussion so far, it seems there are two views now. Uh, previously, it was only the purely manual count. Count the receipts, 
or count the ballots physically. <laughs> but right now, I think there's a second view now. Uh, they call it electronic manual count, uh, where you use a machine again to, to count double the... automation. Y yes, ma'am. Instead so, of hybrid. It's yes, ma'am. Like adding another automated count. This yes, discussion yes. occurred also in the 18th Congress, I must say. And uh, those of us who were here, like Commissioner Sellis, are fully aware uh, that uh, because of the constraints of time, uh, we were worried that an entirely uh, manual count would uh, simply delay the process. Yes, ma'am. Uh, referring to the first option of a purely manual count, they say that it takes uh, 13 more hours for each clustered precinct. I think the only solution there is to decluster the clustered precinct. The, right now, you have 600 to 800 for a clustered precinct. Originally, I think the... You only had like 200, so that's probably cheaper than buying a new system. And then with respect to the electronic manual With count, the population of the Philippines, I think a 200 uh, yes, meter center is completely impractical, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yes, ma'am. What I'm saying, ma'am, is that the if it takes too long uh, to count all the votes in a clustered precinct, so we would think that the cluster, clustering would be an option. Now, secondly, ma'am, with respect to the electronic I manual... Think the move is to make them bigger, nga eh. That mean that will take uh, the... That's uh, baliktad, di ba, sa ating gusto? Well, if, if that will... I think the concern there, ma'am, which is realistic, is that if you, it takes a lot of time to count, there's the probability of violence. So, the shorter the period to finish the count, it's probably the better. No, I, I just want to comment, ma'am, on the electronic manual count of the precinct. So um, there's supposed to be a new machine. There's supposed to be a new software. From our part, ma'am, our only concern is that we would like to see that each count is counted. In other words, it's not like you just show to the people that the, the, this is, these are the ballots, these are the images, and then after three hours, you show to the people that these are the results. We would like to see that for each ballot, for each vote, you can see that the count is moving. Yun po yung ibig sabihin namin ng uh, open count. Hindi yung uh, three hours na blanco po tayo, but then after three hours, you just have the results. It's the same thing. There's no hybrid element there. Uh, yung nawawala pa rin yung uh, open count principle. So whether that's a purely manual count or an electronic transparency count, uh, for as long as we see that each vote is counted for the next three hours, then for us, uh, that should be good enough. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, point well taken. Uh, any reaction from uh, Commissioner Salis, please? I'd like to go on to other topics because we've hauled uh, Attorney Bunny and uh, DBM uh, over, and I'd like to have uh, them participate. But in the meantime, uh, Commissioner Sellis, please. Yeah. With reference to Attorney Donato's uh, comment, uh, before the uh, election summit, we talked with the vendors, you know, and we told them that uh, this is what we see for our 2025 elections, the transparency count. That means one sample that was presented was that after the closing of the precincts, the BB pots with QR code will be read you know, and then displayed uh, para makita ng, ng, ano, ng uh, watchers do sa presinto so parang pag pag display na ganyan yun yung balota so pag display na ganyan meron pang isang column na that would total whatever ballot is presented so kung ballot 1 yan since zero yan pupunta dito yung results so kung yung presidente 1 etc so the second ballot project and then added to the first ballot up to the last uh, ballot, which is the 800 uh, ballot. So this is a very transparent way of projecting the results to the public 
So this yes, is I think that's the um, that's the setup that was actually uh, tested by uh, yes. Commissioner Casquejo uh, last year, and the effort was to um, project. Yes. electronically, what would otherwise have been manually written yes. by the teachers na tara-tara. Correct. Sa so, makita lang ng tao na binibilang yung boto nila kasi hindi biglaan yes. na parang sinusukan na lang ng mga Correct. bitin, may resulta na yun. And these vendors who participated in the uh, election summit, they said that they can do it. Yes, they can do it. Yeah. Kaya lang, walang projector doon. Wala pa projector <laughs> Kaya hindi natin makita. At saka wala rin tayong laptop. So, yun, karagdagang gasto. So, yes, na, uh, yun ang transparency count. Tama. Kasi nasabi ni Chairman. No? Oo, oo, tama. Pag nakita mo, kasi kailangan nandun eh. At saka, evidentiary din, di ba? Yun din, isa pang problema. Kapag may protesta, yeah. wala kang panghawakan. Ma'am, at saka, that's only one method. But there could be several methods that these vendors are proposing. Yung transparency count. Yung sinabi niyo earlier about uh, Commissioner Casqueo's presentation during the 18th Congress is only one. So, itong mga vendors during, uh, during the summit says, said that they have a methodology of doing the transparency count in projecting it publicly. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think Mr. Cabrera was raising his hand, yeah? Uh, if you can just... Uh, Keep it short. We have uh, several other questions yes. that need to be answered. Thank you. Thank yes, you Kapatira, yeah. please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, natutuwa po kami <clears throat> na uh, nais nating maging mas transparent perhaps, no? Or more transparent yung darating na election sa 2025, no? Uh, ngunit, uh, para bang, if charity begins at home, no? Transparency should begin with COMELEC in the case of our automated elections in 2025. And uh, that transparency, Madam Chair, the way we see it, begins with the transparency on the terms of reference to be to be approved. Yeah, have to be approved, no? So, unfortunately, <clears throat> sinasabi nila, July, kailangan ng pagalawin yan. So, Kung ilalabas ng end of April lang, kung ilalabas ng say end of April lang TOR, there's practically two months for people to look into the TOR, uh, how transparency is addressed there and all of these things, and perhaps give them time to adjust the TOR based on you know appropriate recommendations they might uh, adopt. So, yun lang. Ang, <clears throat> ngayon po, meron kaming petition sa COMELEC na kung saan hinihiling namin na sana gawing transparent yung terms of reference, which is the soul of this undertaking. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm in full agreement, Mr. Cabrera. And uh, at the same time, we recognize the uh, worry of the chairman that uh, time is really running out and we need to speed up the process, ASEC-D and everyone else in the CAC. Pilitin natin para... <laughs> Hindi lang mabuo at uh, talagang himayin ng maigi yung TOR, kundi ikalat din para pag-aralan ng iba't ibang stakeholders natin. So I'd like to, uh, yes, Commissioner Bulay, I'd like to go to another topic because GPPB is here at mahirap hirap sila hatakin. So Commissioner Bulay, please. What, one minute lang, Chair. Uh, before we leave the topic of procurement, which is mentioned because we've experienced uh, a lot about the problems in procurement. Uh, I was proposing in, in the, your new law that uh, uh, special COMELEC procurement law be done outside of 9184 because the deadlines there simply doesn't match. And so we generis po yung, yung aming procurement, eh, it's affected by so many things. Uh, and napakahirap po. Opo, yun nandun po sa 9184 and we should follow it to the letter. Otherwise, katakot Are you takot saying takot. that uh, they're too tight or too... They are, they are not realistic, madam. One example po, like the indelible ink, like what happened in the postponement of the barangay election. In the barangay and SK election. Under the law, we're supposed to be have it delivered. Yes, bago po mag-expire, mag-expire next year. 
and procurement has to be done in 2022. Yun po yung aming problema eh. And uh, normally po, bawal naman kami makipag-usap sa supplier yeah. na iba yung delivery date and payment and all. Ang dami pong problema. Andyan po ang NPO, alam nila. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat po. Maybe we can uh, discuss them as a subset of issues, no? Nabanggit ni Chairman Garcia na kinakailangan magkaroon ng level playing field at uh, papasukin ang lahat ng teknolohiya at uh, nakita naman natin sa summit na pagkarami-rami na and uh, highly advanced na yung uh, higit sa iisang kumpanya. Kasi paratin na lang natin narinig mula sa poll, puro smartmatic na lamang. Um, sa position paper, kasi di ba dalawang issues yan eh. Yung una, parating problema natin na laging uh, kinakailangan nag nagkaroon na ng um, similar um, electoral experience. At the same time, GPPB has opposed the removal that we recommended of the single largest completed contract. Di ba may requirement kasi that in the procurement in the hybrid election system, we should remove the SLCC, yung single largest, for um, purpose of establishing a tangible gauge of their track record. We posited the, the notion that there are other uh, ways to um, prove the capacity of the um, provider. No? So um, the GPBB in its position paper, Tama po ba, Attorney uh, Bani, pointed out that under the rules, if the procuring entity determines that imposing the single largest requirement which will result in a monopoly, the procuring entity, in this case Comelec, may, in lieu of single largest contract, require, one, that the bidder should have completed two similar contracts, the aggregate amounts of which should be equivalent to 50% of the contract at hand. Ibig sabihin, may financial capacity talaga yon na mabubuo niya. And also that one of the contracts must be at least equivalent to 50%. Um, ang akin lang, GPPB, pareho pa rin to halos ng uh, single largest contract. You're not giving us very much wiggle room. Is uh, that correct? Pero tawaran na lang to ng bilas ang isda. Nasa 50% na lang tayo. Ganun ba yun? Um, magandang hapon po, Madam Chair. Um, um ni espouse po ng TSO ay yung lamang pong nakalagay na sa ating IRR. Ito po ang sinasabi po natin ngayon ay um, uh, specific concerns ng um, COMELEC uh, in relation to the uh, procurement, election procurement. Um, ang Ito pong posisyon namin ay, ay base lamang po doon sa general rules na nakalagay sa ating IRR. Na it, na, pero the IRR are not written in stone. If they're not working, certainly the agency can change them. Hindi po ba? Ang pagbabago po, ma'am, um, Madam Chair, ng IRR ay sumasailalim po sa proseso ng pag um, ng pag-approval po ng ating Government Procurement Policy Board. So, at this point po, hindi, um, hindi po ito na-erase pa sa GPPB upang ito po ay pag-aralan at um, pag-desisyonan. Pero naman pwede natin erase, ano? Maaari, maaari po, yes ma'am. Opo. I mean to say, kasi dalawang had lang lagi, kaya iisa na nanalo. Ang laging sinasabi sa amin, ang may experience lang, ang may karanasan lang ng previous electoral exercise ay Smartmatic. Ikalawa, ang lagi na lang sinasabi, may single largest completed contract, di ba, yung SLCC na yan. Tapos tinatanong ko ngayon sa GPPB, uh, ang sabi nila, at least 50%, uh, ng uh, contract value. Dapat meron na silang kontratang ganun kalaki. Eh baka wala naman na uh, makakapagpakita ng kontratang ganyang kalaki. Balik na naman tayo sa Smartmatic. Parang uh, ganun na lang lagi. 
Madam Chair, in-encourage po under the IRR ang pag-conduct ng market study upang ma-determine po. Ayun na nga. Market, you can market study until you're blue in the face, but if the requisite is that the single largest completed contract still constitute a uh, 50%, baka wala pang Pilipino na makakahabol niyan. Doon po sa al alternatibo after uh, the 50%, dalawa po, dalawa, uh, at least, ipig sabihin po, pwede po yan madagdagan. At least two, ang, ang dapat po niya. At least two, pero yung isa, 50%. Nagabala ka pa doon sa dapat. Ma'am, yung, ma yung bali po lumalabas, kung 50% po yung threshold natin doon sa single largest uh, completed contract, yung pang isa doon, ay kalahati po lamang 50% na yon Effectively, parang 25% po yung pinag-uusapan no, natin. Okay. Kasi medyo malabo yung pagkasulat. Pero sa tingin ko, ma makakatulong ba talaga ito? Kasi ang gusto natin, may Pilipino, may ibang lahi, may iba-ibang providers na makakapasok. Kasi parang naging uh, forever and ever na lamang iisang provider. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bulay. Five seconds <laughs> naman. 50% Five na CPPB. For your information, sa buong mundo, sa automation, elected number one tayo. No? Uh, marami na akong nakausap, marami ko na rin research. Sa buong mundo, may technology lang nung ganitong klaseng election, yung Smartmatic. Number one sa 5,000 countries. Sila yung may hawak ng franchise. So, kung ganun ang requirement, eh wala, kaming, wala na kaming choice. And then, hindi rin tayo makaka-develop ng the same. And since we have the program, nakakapanghinayang po. And we have Senator Marcos here, na bukas yung isip. And then, I'm not kidding. When we took out, then the chairman took out the trash, he took out the box as well. So, we tried to think out of the box. And that procurement thing is holding us back. Ayan, nag kami ni Engineer Cabral palagi ng NPO printing. No? Ako kasi sa BSKE, ako naparusahan. Kaya siya pinaparusahan. Salamat. Ay, salamat, Commissioner Bulay. Ah, uh, wala bang magagawa ang GPPB para tulungan kami? Kasi parang talagang hinihigpitan ninyo ng labis-labis to the point na kinakawawa na natin yung mga Filipino developers. Hindi na tama itong ginagawa natin. Talagang pinapabora na lamang ng GPPB ang uh, tanging may-ari ng mga technology uh, mula sa ibang bansa pagkat sila ang uh, may record ng malalaking kontrata. E eh, syempre, kung nag-uumpisa ka dito lamang sa Pilipinas, wala ka pang maipapakita ang kontrata ng pagkalaki-laki. Um, Madam Chair, ito pong aming... Dumasunong naman kayo sa Pilipino, <laughs> ang sinasabi ko. Ang lupit naman. Mad Madam Chair, ito pong aming um, inilagay na, inilahad na posisyon Again po, base po sa existing na IRR po namin. Ngayon po, um, of course, we will defer to the wisdom of legislature to come up with uh, an appropriate measure para po ma-address po itong specific concerns for the elections. But as far as uh, we could, um, um, going back to GPPB, um, we can come up with... Um, an item for discussion with the Secretariat so that we can discuss this. But, ma'am, if... Diyan nga ako nagtapo ka eh. Kasi wala naman sa anumang batas na nagsasabi na single largest completed contract. Invento lang ng GPPB. Pero mas malupit pa sa anumang batas. Opo. That's why, uh, that's why po, um... <laughs> I mean, okay, wala po sa 9184, yung single largest completed contract. Uh, nandoon po siya sa IRR um, based on the authority of the GPPB to come up with that IRR. So, um, ito po ang, mai, ang maitutulong po namin ay maaari po itong maging item of discussion ng GPPB para po makonsider. But um, considering po yung um, urgency, opo. <laughs> Ang pagkaalala ko, naglagay tayo ng uh, iba pang alternative maliban dyan sa requirements ng GPPB na financial, uh, technical, organizational capability yes. as another qualifier. Para okay. lang makapasok yung iba. 
Opo, Madam Chair. Ito pong um, alternative ay isa na rin po sa requirements kasama po ng SLCC na nakapaloob. Okay, rin... Inopose ninyo eh. Andyan eh sa inyong uh, position paper. You're opposing the removal. Um, sinabi po namin na existing na po yung um, techno, uh, capability, yung ating organizational financial capability. Yes, existing so requirements. Existing? Hindi naman guni-guni. Ano? Siyempre existing naman siya. Et Kasi ang akin lang, ito kasi yung problema dahil uh, madalas itong uh, mga IRR, mas matindi pa at lampas-lampas pa sa ninanais ng batas. Doon nang uh, problema. Uh, lawmaking should be confined to Congress and not to the various agencies of government. Ano? Parang uh, gumagawa ng uh, uh, kung ano-anong pahirap eh. Hindi naman yata tama. So yun lang, wala ba tayong maisip pang iba? Kasi sabi nga ni Commissioner Bulay, miskin timelines. Eh nakakahibang, hindi talaga magagampanan ng komele. At mag-e-expire yung kasangkapan, katulad nung ink nga, syempre mag-e-expire yun eh, napospone eh. Madam Chair, nakakonfine po kami doon sa provisions na... Yes, but how do you suggest we change things? You know, we have to move it along. Well, I can go back to uh, GPPB and discuss this because I cannot put GPPB... I cannot speak for no, GPPB at this point. No, I understand that you point. cannot yes, speak for them, but if you could just recommend, being uh, that you know your uh, procedures best, if you could help us along, and that this is the call of the times that we really should start developing our own and uh, requiring all these different uh, uh, onerous... Uh, uh, requisites is simply uh, um, is simply disqualifying at the outset every Filipino IT developer uh, in operation. Yes, Mr. Contreras, please. Ever since 2008, po, Madam Chair, may recommendation kami to change the clause na wag lang election related yung basis ng SLCC. Gawin technology company, marami na pong Filipino company ang lulusot doon. Pero pag nilagay na election-related yung basis na SLCC, wala na pong company lulusot. Maski buong mundo siguro po, may hirapan tayo. Mamimili kay sa dalawa lang po. Tama. At uh, sabi nga ni Commissioner Bulay, sabi mo rin, ang ginagawa ng GPP niyan, they're encouraging monopoly. Diba? You'll keep ending up with the same people because they're the only ones compliant. So, Attorney uh, Bunny, is there a possibility that you delete the election-related IT? Basta IT lang, pwede? May nakasabi ba doon? Parang wala naman eh. Single largest completed contract. Hindi naman sinasabi. May sinasabi ba sa rules ninyo na election-related IT? Um, Kasi ang alam ko, it's general, di ba? Ang nakalagay po sa ating related to the procurement. Opo. Related to the procurement, but not necessarily election specific. Sulat dun eh. Hindi, alimbawa, yung malaki-laki nating mga IT company, uh, they're producing uh, business software, designing brand new stuff, uh, customized for def different uh, corporations in the world, no? nag export tayo ng business software. Pwede ba sila lumahok dito? Or out sila pagkat hindi sila election related? Ang statement po natin, uh, Madam Chair, is similar to the contract to be bid. Similar, uh, one can make the argument that it's similar to the degree that this is just adding and subtracting and consolidating resort. It's actually just a giant calculator. <laughs> Madam Chair, if I may. It's still computer-related. Well, it's still uh, let us calculation. Not, let us not mix the concept of engineering with computer programming because there's such a thing as customization. Unlike what, what the uh, GPB has been drafting, it's patterned after the 
tangible goods like what you do for a road construction. construction. Uh, it's for bidding for it's largely bidding for construction. Exactly. But, and uh, supply. Right, but in the in the field of IT, there's a lot of room that has to be more flexible. You have to have room for customization, for training, for orientation, for designing, which does not match with the engineering works, Madam Chair. So I would imagine that uh, the GPPB turned their uh, rules based on uh, civil works, not for IT. Sige, pag-usapan natin kung anong uh, maaring gawin. Uh, si Senator Padilla, nandito. Senator Robin, nandiyan ka pa pala. Nakamute lang po. You're raising your hand. Sige, ikaw na. Nakabigote ka pala ngayon. Nanibago ko. <laughs> Mabuhay, uh, aming uh, pinakamagandang gin ng natagapangulo at uh, sa lahat po ng ating bisita. Ma'am, uh, ako po ay uh, kanina pa po ako naguguluhan sapagkat uh, dalawang bagay po ang gusto kong itanong sana. Panguna po, una, kapag natuloy po ba yung uh, gusto po nating maging dalawa ang proseso, eh, yung automated at yung uh, manual, ibig po bang sabihin nun na uh, magdadagdag ng budget muli dyan? Yun po yung una na tanong. At ang pangalawa po, bakit naman po tayo uh, gagawa ng isang bagay na dalawa ang para, paraan ng pagbilang? Nakakatawa lang po, ano? pasensya na po kayo. Kasi parang wala tayong tiwala sa isa't isa. At kung dalawa na po ba, nakakasigurado po ba tayong wala nang magre-reklamo na sila'y nadaya pa? Uh, ano po ba ang uh, ang uh, kasiguraduhan nito? Uh, yun lang po ang dalawang tanong ko. Uh, una, yung uh, may dagdag budget po ba yan? Pangalawa, bakit natin kailangan gawin ito? Eh, tayo uh, dapat eh, mamili na lang talaga tayo, automated o manual. Eh, ang hirap naman siguro kung dalawa pa. Uh, 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 ano naman ang kasiguraduhan na wala na bang magre-reklamo na sila'y nadaya o nagkaroon ng nadayaan? Yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Mahal na pinakamagandang gin ng taga-pangulo. Nako ha. Seatmate ko kasi si Binoy. Ayan, Binoy. Ganito kasi yon nung uh, 18th Congress at uh, malamang uh, sa lahat ng kongreso nakalipas, Parating maraming reklamo kapag uh, lahat um, electronic, walang tiwala yung tao, hindi nakikita na bibilang yung kanilang uh, balota at inaabangan niyan sa presinto, lalo na sa probinsya. Hindi nila nakikita, parang hindi sila kontento mga resulta na hindi naman nila alam kung totoo o hindi, kung nagkamali yung machine o hindi, kung talagang balota nila o hindi. And uh, that's the reason na naisip na bumalik sa manual counting sa presinto lamang. Pero hindi sigurado na manual counting yan. May mga suggestions na additional technology. May suggestions na dalawa yan na gagawin. So, actually, ang katotohanan, maraming lugar sa mundo na bumalik sa manual dun sa counting. Uh, marami talaga dahil nga, Uh, kinakabahan yung tao pag hindi nakikita yung mga balota mismo binibilang. So that's the reason na we are embarking on this discussion and uh, nung last year pa nga nung last congress pa nga nagkaroon ng uh, some kind of consensus na kailangan may uh, check and uh, may checking or uh, verification process. Kaya pinag-uusapan rin ang verification sa transmission, ano, digital uh, signatures, hash codes, message authentication, and all of that uh, sa transmission. Yung tungkol sa budget, um, inaasahan natin na sana bumaba, pero mukhang lolobo pa. Yun ang problema. But uh, we're trying to look for the simplest, which is why we ended up, nung nakaraang uh, kongreso, uh, ginamit natin yung barcode kasi pinakamura yon at that point in time. Pero mukhang marami naman kasi may idea pa nga si chairman na iisang machine ang gagamitin para hindi na karagdagan. Yung mismong magbibilang, siya na rin ang uh, magmamanual tali para minsan na lang sa isang machine.
So I think that's uh, where we are. Um, ngayon, um, mag, nagpapatulong tayo sa GPPB dun sa procurement process kasi maraming issues sa IT na hindi uh, katumbas nung mga issues sa uh, construction and supply contracts. Iba talaga ang uh, ang computer engineering sa construction, structural, civil engineering. Mahal okay. natin ka po. Ay, oh, oh. Yes, okay. uh, Robin. Opo. Uh, Ma'am, hindi ba uh, sabi mo nga kanina parang question ng tiwala na lang to eh. Parang parang napakahirap na ang mangyayari pa ba nito eh magdadagdag pa ba kung lolobo nga ang budget na naman. Tinidiscuss nga namin eh. Kaya, kasi nga yung technology nagbago na rin eh. Hindi na siguro ganun kamahal. So yun ang hope. Uh, that, that's why we have to go through this exercise. Titignan natin kung uh, ano yung magagawa. Baka makamenos pa kung iisang machine. Uh, and that way, makabilis pa te. So tignan natin. Baka naman na uh, pipwede. Kasi... Talaga namang uh, kung tutuusin, kahit may resibo ka pa, kahit may receipt ka pag bumoto ka, talaga nakakakaba. At halimbawa, uh, yung overseas workers natin, pati yung mga nasa probinsya, ang inaasam-asam nila, mabo, makita nila yung bilangan. Yung transparency mm -hmm. talaga. Opo. So, bani, bani, that's bani, what bani, they really bani. want to see. Eh, bani, kung bani. sinusubo lang sa machine, wala kang nakikita, kundi yung total sa bandang uli. Uh, opo. Uh, Ma'am, bali, paano po yun? Uh, Ma'am Chairman, ibig pong sabihin, mawawala na yung Smartmatic? Ganun po ba yun? Hindi, yeah, ganun pa rin. Meron pa rin, uh, meron pa rin, largely automated pa rin. Largely automated. Kaya lang, yung sinasuggest nga, siguro sa present level, may magawa tayo para, para may makita yung tao at uh, may katibayan na kapag may protesta or kapag may discrepancy, eh, may babalikan ka, may pinanghahawakan kang bilang na nasa balota talaga. Mm -hmm. uh, ma, 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 chairman, pwede po natin matanong ang COMELEC, uh, atin pong uh, chairman, kung ano pa sa palagay niya? Mag-manual na lang ba tayo o mag-automated ba tayo? Ano ba sa palagay gusto? po nila? Walang, walang gustong uh, bumalik sa manual at saka matagal na kami ni uh, chairman noong private practice pa siya. Matagal na namin pinag-uusapan yung hybrid kasi nga uh, napakahirap ng fully automated. As a matter of fact, maraming bansa, yung Austria, Australia, Singapore, na high-tech na high-tech, bumalik sa manual ang ibang bahagi ng proseso. So hybrid po talaga, hybrid na mangyayari. Yun ang pinag-uusapan ngayon kung anong sistema ang maayos eh. Kasi sabi nga ni Commissioner Bulay, baka hybrid technologies. Puro automated pero iba-iba. Kasi napakatagal naman kung puro uh, manual lamang. So that's where we are actually. Pagka hybrid na po, ibig sabihin nun, ma pwedeng wala nang issue na nagkadayaan. Kasi alam ko naman po, ang issue na to, laging sa usapan ng dayaan eh. Yun po ang gusto kong ma-resolve Pagka ito ba ginawa na natin, pwede na po nating sabihin talaga na walang dayaan. Kasi yan ang laging issue eh, ng, mga, ng mga politiko. Actually po, ma'am, politiko ang um, problema natin. Hindi eh, naman yung mga tao. Yung mga... Yung politiko. Ito talaga naman. Ganyan naman, naman talaga. Sa... Lagi silang nadaya. Tama yun. Sa bawat eleksyon, dadalawa lang ang resulta. May mga nanalo at merong natalo. Pero dito sa Pilipinas, na iba tayo sa buong mundo, may nanalo at may nadaya. Ganun lang yun. Wala tayong magagawa. Ugali na natin eh. Okay po. So wala pang kasiguraduhan po pala, Ma'am uh, Ginang Tagapolo. Uh, Pinagdidiscuss pinag -discuss pa namin, but uh, you raise good points. Is this necessary? We go back to the root cause. At uh, yun nga, yung tiwala ng tao at yung talagang mainit ang Pilipino sa eleksyon, gustong-gusto makita talagang bilang na bilang yung boto nila eh. Ganun eh. Ugali rin natin yun eh. Napakahalaga. Kasi yan ang kaisa isang pagkakataon na pantay-pantay ang bawat isa. Tig-isang boto lang tayo. 
kahit mayaman, sikat, walang pera, lahat pantay-pantay. Salamat. Amen, amen, amen. Maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Mabuhay po, mabuhay po. Thank you. So, ayaw ko naman kuyugin si Attorney Bunny. Talaga naman lahat tayo nakagano'n. Ano? Naka, na, talaga, upakan na siya, kawawa naman. Hindi, tulungan na lang ninyo kami kasi talagang uh, maintindihan naman ninyo. Like, uh, um, Mr. Casino said, hindi naman pareho rito ng DPWH contract. Ibang-iba naman ang sitwasyon dito. May customized, may uh, post operations, may uh, fine tuning, tapos uh, i-upgrade pa. Wala naman ganun talaga, di ba? Uh, iba naman sitwasyon sa construction at saka mere supply. Ito kasi, ongoing yung kontrata, di ba? Uh, at hindi ganun kasimple. At tigit sa lahat, gusto natin i-customize uh, at bigyan ng pagkakataon ng Pilipino. Yun yun. Kasi ang ginagawa, ang resulta, nakita natin, ang resulta ng mga patakaran ng GPPB ay eh, nagkaroon ng monopolia. Dapat iwasan yun. Baliktad yung epekto. Yung epekto, nagkaroon ng monopoly. Iisa at iisa lamang ang laging magka-qualify. Yun. So, alam natin yun. Since 2004, 2010, yun na yun talaga. Hindi na nagbago dahil nga dyan. So maybe you can bring that up to, uh, to uh, the, the authorities. And also tell us, I think uh, Attorney Trish is also here. Maybe you can tell us what are the steps to take. Because um, it's really inadequate. I think you will also encounter the same problems with regard to DOST and DICT contracts. They're not so different and they will require the same kind of... Uh, flexibility, and reorientation. Um, the other question I wanted to raise was simply uh, that in the COMLEC submission, the COMLEC appears to oppose the provision requiring the printing of ballots in the NPO or the National Printing Office or the BSP because such requirement would be unconstitutional. Is that uh, the understanding? Um, is there any jurisprudence that actually says so? Yun ang pagkaintindi ko eh, na unconstitutional kapag uh, confined to only NPO and BSP. Yes, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, Madam. Yes, uh, the, law, uh, the law confines us to only three. Uh, it should be the NPO, APO Printing, and the Banco Central. So outside of that, wala na po kami pwedeng i-print, pag-printa ng balota. Ang problema po ganito, kung yung machine po ng NPO requires a different kind of paper because it cannot use any other kind, kami po ang nakukontrol sa cost at sa time kasi o-ordering pa po namin sa China one delivery po Pasko. Pasensya na po kayo kasi yun ang experience ko talaga. In order ng November, October, di deliver ng December, January na po bago lumabas sa pier. Kung natuloy po yung eleksyon, baka po may problema kami doon ng konti. So, you're saying that uh, you would like to be able to print elsewhere outside of the BSP and the NPO? Is that correct? Madam Chair, ang amin pong uh, personal plantilla is has um, a position that is warehouse manager, forklift operators, and the rest. I think when the law was envisioned, it envisioned Comelec to have its own printing also. Otherwise, they wouldn't have that people in the plantilla. What I'm saying is, can the law, the revision of the Omnibus Election Code, give us more flexibility when it comes to things like printing, or even the machines, para hindi po kami parang shotgun na mapipilitan kami. Like ito po, ito pong BSK, obligado kami bumili ng 160 grade na papel from China, which is not locally available. Samantalang ako, butante, matagal na panahon. Politiko rin ako, matagal na panahon. Kahit po yung suput ng pandesal, bobotohan ko eh. Hindi ko naman tinitignan ko anong klase na papel. Ang amin pong 
Ang ating po experience, Madam Chair, yung demokrasya po nagiging masyado na mahal. Ano po? Uh, BSKE po, magkano ang cost ng komisyon para sa barangay? Uh, printing. Iba po ang machine, iba ang papel, iba po ang gastos doon sa pagbili ng papel. Ayun po eh, kasi if you want Uh, ang ako ho, hindi nag-aano on anything. Ang sinasabi ko lang ho, kung may streamline yan. But for example, yung, uh, yung specificity ng papel, sino nag-establish nun? Uh, under the law, wala po eh. Uh, Kaya nga, saan galing yung papel requirement na dapat yung uh, single quality of paper? Ako, madam, as printing chairman ng Comilec, sa, sa NPO po, NPO ang nagre-require. Oh, kasi yun ang, yun, lang yun ang, ang printing machine nila. Eh kasi lumarin yung printing nila, di ba? Hindi naman pwede iba't ibang klase ng papel. So that's uh, required ng NPO. Eh yung yes. BSP naman, ganun din. Oh, iba-iba po, madam. Kaya pong sumali sa bidding dahil meron daw silang usapan na pag-comilex sa NPO. Kaya talaga hong ang daming problema. Ah, uh, mga kaibigan, huwag kayong magagalit sa akin. Diretso lang 'to kasi pare-pareho tayong nagtatrabaho, no? Sa gobyerno. Uh, Madam Chair, gusto namin po ng flexibility. That's why I reviewed all 978 pages of your very good Nako. initiative. And I placed there in Article 3 yung lahat oh, oh. po ng problema namin sa Comile. Eh, para I alam natin yung realidad. Oo. Oh, oh. So yun po yung problema. I'm nothing against them. Okay naman sila sa timelines and all. Kaya alam po, para kaming hawak-hawak sa leeg. Problema namin ng warehouse, malam. Actually, di ba, hindi naman lihim na nagkaroon na ng corruption charges in the past tungkol sa... Apo, NPO printing, na sinasubcontract sa maliliit na printer, na nasa maliliit na mga apartment na kung saan-saan lang. Eh, alam na natin yung mga istoryang yun, di ba? Um, how do we prevent that from happening, di ba? Without imposing, as you said, a single printer for all Comelec materials. Paano nga, anong, uh, anong dapat gawin? Kasi kayo expert diyan pag sobrang flexible naman baka mako sino-sino at bumalik yung GPPB at uh, sabihin sabi na nga eh Madam Chair napakadami po ng printing requirements ng commission election kahit po yung pinapatanggal po ng committee yung voters information sheet na napakamahal ng inaabot po natin na may mga question pa kung nakakatanggap o nakakarating talaga sa mga Never pa ako eh. Ang dami po kasi mga requirements ng COMELEC, katulad din sa aming education information, yung campaign, yung mga pamphlets, yung mga, mga doc, uh, papel na binibigay namin. It's really high time na makapag-isip ang COMELEC if we will, if we will have the, the, the facilities, the building, na magkaroon ng printing department within the commission. We will be printing all the requirements of the commission. That is possible, that, that can be done. But of course... That will take some some time, but the point is we should be given that flexibility, meaning to choose uh, which uh, uh, printer or which uh, agency the COMELEC can. Pwede naman po. In fact, po ngayon piniprint namin, nagpiprint kami sa NPO ng balota uh, mga accountable forms. But we exercise the option because sabi namin that's what the law provides. We can always exercise the option because that is what the constitution provides that the cons that the COMELEC. Uh, being being uh, empowered to uh, administer the conduct of election, we can choose other printer provided na agent, government agency siya. So, nag-avail din po kami ng ibang, print, uh, ibang printer, for example, do sa Apo Printing, but non-accountable forms. And then, sabi po namin, we are now encouraging the Banko Central ng Pilipinas, baka pe pwede mag-participate na sila sa amin, maganda po yung facilities nila. Uh, ang, ang importante po, uh, sa pagka nakapamili kami ng tamang uh, printer, um, hindi ma madidelay ang lahat ng, ng... Ang pinakamahira po kasi, eksakto dapat lagi ay yung pagpiprint ng balota. Try to imagine, Madam Chair, 68 million na po ang Filipino voters at this time. 68 million. 92 million kasama ang SK. 92 million. Ganun po kadami ang ipiprint natin. Buti nga po, nag one is to one tayo sa printing ng balota. Dati po, one is to one plus additional three sa bawat presinto na dagdag. Ganun po kadami. And we are practically spending 
for Barangay and SK election, we are practically spending nine, almost one billion for the printing requirement of the commissioner election. So medyo magkaroon lang po ng flexibility so that makapamili po kami ng tamang pricing, ma yung pong pinaka-lowest uh, uh, price, yun po yung ma-avail ng commissioner election. Tama. Um, yes, I, I think you do need more flexibility. Laging uh, daing ng ating overseas, di ba? Na parating late ang balota. Lahat late. At uh, di ba, kung minsan nandun na sila, election day na sa kanila, wala pa rin silang uh, nakikitang balota. Hirap na hirap lahat. And uh, I think that's one of the issues talaga eh. So, yun nga, the uh, question is what to put. Uh, so, how would you like it to be termed? Perhaps uh, um, you have suggested provisions pa. Yes, Commissioner Bulay, we're open to any changes. Pasensya na kayo, makulit ako eh. Abe, um... De, pag nag-suggest kayo, kayo na rin magsulat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yun lang yun. Madam, simply put flexibility to decide but supported by market study. Yun po lamang ang gusto namin. We will not be... Because there's no way we But can abuse this. Market history. study. Baka pa, babalik tayo dun sa, sa GPPB na may uh, pre-qualification ng uh, may kakayahan, oh. may financial, technical, etc. capability. Kasi ma'am, uh, available naman yung technology sa Pilipinas, yung printing aspect po. Ang problema lang ho ng iba is... May requirement ng papel. Ayaw po namin makontrol doon. Masyadong mahal po yung papel eh. So, uh, ang dami pang, ano nun, ang dami pang kasamang gastos, pati pag ano. Yeah, Madam Chair, with regards to the specification of paper, with regards to the printing of ballots, kaya lang po kami nag-require this time ng 160 kasi yung duration ng printing requirement, medyo maiksi. Pero ang sinasabi namin, ang machines namin can print also with the uh, ATGSM paper, but we require at least a larger time to print. Tapos magbabago po kami doon sa, sa post-press namin. Tapos manipis ang papel, there is a possibility na mag-jam yung doon sa sheeting. So medyo babagalan namin yung machine. The, saan lang po ng printing ng National Printing Office yung time requirement ng pag-deliver ng balota kung medyo mas mahaba po yung duration niya kahit po na mas manipis na papel kaya po namin i-print yan and in fact wala po na mga delay na delivery of ballots sa history po ng election ng Pilipinas na delay ang printing in fact yung BSK po nga po nito eh, we just printed in 50 days. Kung yun po ay sa mas manibis na papel, kaya lang po, medyo haba po yung duration of printing. Kasi nga, medyo babagala natin yung post-press. Ganun lang po. Or we will not require the thickness of the paper to more uh, than 60 GSM. That is the maximum. If we want a, at least 40 to 50 uh, days to deliver, yun lang po. Just imagine that is uh, Barangay SK we have printed uh, 19 ballots. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you for that. Uh, that's reassuring. Um, in To your mind, sa uh, Comelec, uh, alin yung mga alternatives na tinitignan ninyo maliban sa NPO, APO at sa KBSP na hindi naman nagbibid, sabi nga ninyo? Sino-sino pa kaya? Are you considering mga private printers and so on? Doesn't that open us up once again to all sorts of, uh, um, well, problems? Hindi naman po, Madam Chair. Private uh, printers, uh, that's a no-no. Uh, that will compromise the security. So in the addition pal- to the NPO, BSP, sino-sino pa ang uh, naisip natin? Um, okay lang po kami dun sa tatlo because pag binasa po natin kasi yung law, it would appear that only the NPO can print the ballots and accountable forms. And that's why we have to uh, to think outside of the box and we are interpreting it now na, na, na pwede mag-print ang ibang agency printers, not necessarily NPO lang. And the strategy should be whether to bundle or unbundle. Alam niyo po, kung mabibigyan kami ng leeway to choose which of the three 
kahit na accountable form po yan, kahit po yan ay balota, pwede namin i-bundle, uh, Madam Chair. Eh. Pag binandle namin yun, kahit bahala po silang maglaban-laban sa presyo. Sila na ang pahala mag-supply ng papel, si kapapel na nila yan, and uh, pababaan na lang sila ng presyo. Not unlike... Well, one billion nga yung total required. Eh. Siguro pwede naman paghati-hati yan. Yes, Madam Chair. At saka they're not of equal uh, importance or weight. And they don't have the same timelines, di ba? Yes, Madam Chair. Yung pong one billion, BSKE po yun. Ganun ka BSKE yung, pa lang. Ganun po kaiksi yung balota. Come to think of it, Madam Chair, kung 100, 160 ang yung kapal ng papel na mahaba po yung ano, hindi po yun one billion. Ang, ang presyo, tapos eh, ang ating pong bal, uh, butante ay 68 uh, billion. So, flexibility for us to choose which among the three so that the COMELEC can decide to, bond, to uh, bundle the printing, meaning sila na pulat ang bahala, yung mismong Pero printer niya. Pero yung sa tatlo, tatlo, oh, sa, sa tatlo, tatlo o sa dalwa. Yes, Madam Chair. Not unlike kung naka, nasa isa lang kami, then therefore, yung presyo po, we can negotiate, but then, Um, pag sinabing ganito po, wala kaming choice, Madam. I see. Now I understand. Kasi nalito ako dahil nakasulat dito sa inyong position paper na the uh, selection of a printer would render the uh, law unconstitutional dahil nga pinipigilan na pumili. Uh, sa palagay ko, ang uh, nais natin mangyari is uh, bigyan lang ng uh, um, flexibility nga ang COMELEC Uh, to uh, divide the contract perhaps and uh, look at other government printers. So perhaps you can help me uh, redraft this uh, provision given that uh, you're far more familiar with the issues as well as uh, the NPO and APO. Has uh, the BSP ever told you why they wouldn't even bid in addition to may usapan na kami? Kasi parang sila yung pinaka-modern, ano? Sa totoo lang. In fact, Madam Chair, gustong-gusto namin yung facilities nila. Nga ng lugar nila eh. Si Kaya alam po mukhang they, they wanted to focus uh, really dun sa sa uh, sa passport, sa printing of uh, the money. Uh, they do not want to participate anymore dito sa ibang, sa ibang sa, especially sa election. Maybe, maybe Comsec, we can inquire with the BSP if they still have capacity or are they already uh, overburdened by the uh, requisite by the documents they are presently printing. Ano, Sige. thank you. So, uh, any any other uh, concerns that uh, we can uh, discuss? Yeah. The thoughts of Comelec on the GPPB, medyo napag-usapan na natin yan, napag-usapan na rin yung iba't iba. Are we ready to go into a TWG? Or uh, should we have another hearing following the CAC? We're pending eh, the TOR, hindi po ba? Ganun ba? Or uh, what do you think? Madam Chair, we, we are not rushing. We are rushing the preparation of the TOR, but however, we, we are... It's not rushing. Uh, you're compelled. We, we are waiting for the... We would like the inputs coming from the... Especially, uh, as provided for by 9369. The, but the, in the event that, uh, because of time is of the essence, we will proceed with the TOR, with or without uh, the, the recommendation or advice from the Advisory Council simply because that's our mandate. We do not want to abandon the mandate of the Commission. That's right. Um, how do we proceed um, with the spending bills? Do you think we are ready for a TWG or we wait? We await the results of uh, the CAC? I think what we could possibly do is uh, simply get an update. We don't need a full-blown hearing, and we probably don't have to haul out all of you. But maybe you can give us a uh, an update, and uh, we can determine uh, what would be the best way forward at which we can have a TWG. Pero right now, dahil nakatenga pa rin yung sa CAC, palagay ko medyo magulo pa, no? So, mag-iintay kami sa next hearing. Total, marami pang nakapending dito sa, sa committing to. Uh, 
if you could update us doon sa develop, developments ng CAC at saka yung uh, TOR so that we are uh, better um, advised uh, as to the uh, committee report. Okay lang ba yun? Um, when would that be? Just uh, projecting forward. Before the end of April, Madam Chair, we'll have our TOR. Yeah, sabi niyo do or die na yan, eh, kasi nandyan na, otherwise hindi kayo aabot ng July, no? Yes, Madam Chair. And uh, we will be, as an initiative also, based on the outcome of this hearing, the Commission will be writing a letter to GPPB for purposes of clarifying, because that will be the basis of a legal action, just in case, for purposes of, in, uh, a, uh, for example, the Supreme Court interpreting the the provision and clarifying whether the IRR really is consistent with the mandate, the, the intent of the legislature. And likewise, we'll be writing the Philippine Competition Commission in order for us to be guided on how to address or what, uh, what are the strategies to address this problem. Okay, yes, uh, because uh, we uh, have observed that in fact, uh, GPB's rules have encouraged monopoly and certainly have... Um, excluded Filipino IT developers, which is unfortunate and certainly not the intended result. So we'll uh, probably get back together by May so that by then we have a better uh, idea of what's going on with the CAC. And uh, we can't go much further than that because hindi na aabot ng Julio. So thank you very much uh, for the lively discussion today. Um, it's best that... Uh, we uh, debate and disagree and uh, uh, fully air our instincts here. Um, I apologize if uh, there hasn't been a general consent on all uh, aspects, but isn't that the uh, genuine spirit of discussion and debate? Thank you very much to all of you. Maraming um, salamat. As they say, we may not have answered all the questions, but we've certainly raised the level of confusion. Thank you very much. <laughs>